So I get this question a lot, and it's what do I carry with me for antennas? And I've done this video many times over the years, uh, but I found also that my antenna kit changes over time. So it's good to kind of, you know, recap after a busy summer uh, season of parks on the air activations on, you know, what I'm doing for my portable antenna kit. So here I am in the back of my car and I'm going to show you the essential things that I've been carrying along with me for the, the last several months. So first off, I've got two pieces on my portable antenna kit. Uh, one is the box with the antennas in it. And then I also have a larger uh, bag. And uh, this is a, a light stand bag, just an inexpensive photographic light stand bag that I keep some of the other things that definitely aren't gonna fit in the box here. Uh, so let's go into the bag first and uh, see what those essentials are. So one of the new things I started carrying this year is this spider beam uh, 22 foot uh, fiberglass mast. I picked this up at Hamvention this last year and it's really been a useful tool. I've used this as a center support for uh, dipole style antennas and also an end support for like end fed half wave antennas. Uh, just easily goes, easily extends to 22 feet. So uh, you can get a, yeah, you can get a 10 through 40 meter end fed half wave up at a, re you know, for, at a reasonable height at its peak and um, uh, get on the air with it. At Hamvention, I also picked up a larger 31 foot fiberglass jackite pole. And um, that one I don't have, I don't keep that one in the car uh, all the time because it is much longer. But that one I'll, I'll pull out if, I, if I'm thinking that I'm really gonna be using a fiberglass mask to, to support the end of uh, say infant half wave antenna. I might pull that one out and uh, use that one for the activation. I'm just gonna set that aside there. And um, one of the other things I've been carrying for the last several months is this um, old tripod. Uh, this is a, a Bogan, you know, now they're called Manfrotto uh, tripods. This is the 3001. They don't make them anymore, in <laughs> this model anymore, unfortunately. Uh, there's similar tripods out there. It extends to about five feet and um, it's aluminum. It's pretty, it's pretty substantial, you know, uh, very durable for uh, what, you know, what it, what it is. And I, as a photographer, as a videographer, I really like a Manfrotto equipment. Yeah, so I picked this one up at a ham fest of all places. You know, watch ham fest for old photographic tripods. You can usually get a good deal on them. So I've been using this as a, as a base for elevated vertical antennas, like that Pota Performer antenna. I've used, I use this as a base for my um, magnetic loop antenna. I've used this as a base for the uh, Chameleon Delta loop antenna. So it's been a very uh, useful tool in that regard. Uh, the other base I use is this. Uh, this is a heavy um, steel, a chrome plated steel uh, flagpole base. You know, if you see those uh, uh, feather flags that are typically in front of businesses, you know, to advertise, you know, their sales or their open or things like that. Uh, this is this is one of the bases that's used for that. I bought it many years ago for the purpose of of a, <laughs> a feather flag, but it's it's been repurposed as part of my. Um, Parks on the air kit, so I use this, or my portable kit, so I use this if I'm doing the um, uh, ground mounted vertical antenna, you know, like the 17 foot whip uh, paired with, you know, like the Sporty 40 or, or something like that. Pretty heavy duty. Uh, you can set this up in 20 mile an hour winds and um, it's not going to tip over with that 17 foot whip. Um, and speaking of whips, uh, right now, I've been carrying three whips. I've got them in this cardboard tube. The, um, and just mostly I got three whips in here is because I can fit three whips in here. Uh, the uh, Wolf River 213 inch whip. I've got the uh, Chameleon 17 foot whip and I'll kind of alternate between those two uh, for a ground mounted antenna or if I'm using the Pota Performer. And then also I got the brand new Chameleon uh, SS25 25 foot whip and I've been kind of playing with this uh, recently so it's been it's been uh, rolling with me uh, these last few activations. Uh, paired with that with that 25 foot whip is I started carrying my 
uh, Silver Bullet 1000. Uh, this is the Wolf River, the original Wolf River, River coil, uh, 10 through 80 meters, you know, depending on the type of uh, whip you're using. But pair that 25 foot whip with the Silver Bullet 1000, and you've got an awesome um, ground mounted uh, 80 meter uh, vertical antenna. Now putting those items aside, let's dig right into the um, my portable antenna kit. Now I've, this box I've been using for several years. It's the Husky 5 gallon uh, plastic tote. Uh, very rugged, very durable, uh, clear polycarbonate top, polyethylene bottom. This thing is, I haven't broken it yet and I've had this in the back of the car for at least three years. Uh, it's weather sealed so I don't have to worry about, you know, if, I, if it's outside, I don't have to worry about it getting wet. The uh, nice thing about it is I can do all four, all six of the clasps, and now the top is completely removable. It makes things a whole lot easier to demonstrate what we got going on here. Okay, uh, top of the kit right now, uh, my rope bag. Uh, this, is, this is the same rope bag I've been using for many years. Uh, I've got an assortment of ropes there. I've got at least two 100-foot ropes that I use for... Uh, throwing lines in the air for uh, into a tree for an end support of an antenna and uh, in that regard I also have the um, Weaver leather products uh, 12 ounce uh, shot bag uh, to do that with I've got some fifth I've got a couple 50 foots and I got a few uh, 25 foot ropes and I've been starting to carry some a little bit shorter uh, ropes and uh, this um, centerpiece. Um, these are used, you know, the shorter ropes and this uh, uh, center here I use with the uh, fiberglass masks if I want to uh, have that uh, vertical, you know, without any other, you know, lashing it to anything else. I can use that as a support piece. Uh, these are just um, Amazon uh, packing totes or packing cubes. So it, it keeps everything kind of organized. Up next is coax. I've got uh, in here one 50-foot piece of RG8X, two 25-foot pieces of RG8X coax, and I've started to carry something a little bit smaller too. Uh, this is 25 feet of RG316. Um, like I, in the last year, I started to do more uh, QRP operations, and I'm also thinking about smaller, lighter weight uh, kit, you know, so if I need a uh, just a lightweight piece of coax, that, three, that 316 works really well for that. Okay, digging down in the bag, um, I got the parts for my POTA uh, performer antenna uh, on this uh, cardboard uh, wire winder because I haven't <laughs> made anything yet out of a more substantial material. Uh, these are the elevated radio systems for the POTA performer. Also, I got my MFJ. Uh, this is the MFJ915 line isolator and a short piece of coax to attach that to the end of an antenna. Um, MFJ, you know, is no longer in business. If you can find these things, uh, they're, a, they're a, at a reasonable price. They've really gotten expensive as they've become more and more rare. Uh, pick one up. Otherwise, uh, you can, Palomar Engineers is a really good source to get uh, a, a coax chokes and uh, isolators and things like that. Uh, again, uh, this jaw clamp, uh, this is the mirror mount jaw clamp. I've, I've promoted this thing for many, many <laughs> years and um, they're getting a little bit harder to find for some reason, but they're still available. Uh, look for the, um, if you Google the Workman, I think it's the QRC3 um, jaw clamp, you'll find several uh, CB shops and suppliers that uh, sell this thing. So if you can't find it on Amazon, there are third party sources where you can find that clamp. Uh, in here, we've got the magic carpet. Uh, this is three yards of Faraday cloth material. This size 42 by 108 inches. And um, I like, I've, I've used the window screen for a real long time. Uh, I've been, I've kind of switched over to the uh, Faraday cloth because I can put the whole thing in my box here and it just takes up very little space. I don't have that roll of screen banging around in the in the back of the car so we've been kind of using the cloth exclusively now uh let's see sporty 40 coil you know if i'm using you know if, if i want 40 meters ground mounted or if i'm using the porta performer i want 40 meters the sporty 40 coil um is essential for that okay now 
I've kind of talked about all my vertical antennas so far, but I do carry wire antennas. I like to carry two different types of antennas, a vertical and a wire antenna. And right now what I've been using for my um, wire antennas, uh, this is the uh, K4QCD Dually uh, transformer. On one side, it's a uh, 49 to one uh, Unin, and on the other side, it's a nine to one unin. So I can choose if I want an N-fed random wire antenna or an N-fed half wave antenna, all built onto the same uh, frame here. So you just you know hook your coax up to you know whatever side you want, uh, hook your wire up to whatever side you want. It's like it's it's <laughs> uh, two transformers in one, and along with that. I've got the wire to go with it. So my NFED half wave, a wire 66 feet uh, for that, and my NFED random uh, wire 71 feet. I like, to I like my NFED random wire antennas because 71 feet of wire, I can get all the way down to the 80 meter band quite easily and effectively. So if I'm looking at trying to do N1CC, you know, that's, that's usually the antenna I'm gonna grab. Now, as, as this kit's kind of packed, you know, the most important stuff's on the top and the least important it gets to be on the bottom. And that's, that's intentional because I don't want to have to rummage through everything to get to the, um, you know, to the least used pieces. But there are pieces in here that I may need for a particular purpose. In this case here, it, this is sort of my, like a sub pack. <laughs> um, it's my, uh, sort of my new, um, I'm trying to build a QRP antenna kit just so that everything fits into one of these uh, zip top banker style bags. And right now what it has in there, I've got 25 feet of the uh, 316 coax. I've got two antennas in here. This is the chameleon uh, end, or excuse me, off center fed dipole antenna, 10 through 40 meters. I've also got the chameleon's um, and fed half wave antenna. This is the LEF's 4010. This is kind of a big antenna. So I'm, I'm planning to replace this with a smaller, lighter weight and fed half wave. And then um, for some reason, the microphone from my Yesu 87, or my microphone from my Yesu, yeah, 817 is in this bag too. So there we go. That's the, that's the QRP sub kit. Underneath that, I've been carrying a uh, bandpass filter. Uh, this is from C3 Electronics. They're a company, um, uh, just a, a boutique uh, amateur radio manufacturer, not too far from me in, in uh, uh, Wapaka, Wisconsin, Wyawega, Wisconsin. And um, this is the 20 meter filter, so bandpass filter. If you run into a situation, you know, if you're doing a joint activation or something like that, and somebody's on another band kind of uh, messing with things, you want to be on 20 meters, you know, this, these come in really, really handy in, in helping to filter out adjacent RF. Uh, let's see. I got a couple of jumpers here. I use these with the uh, Faraday cloth, the magic carpet, if, um, if I don't have a direct electrical connection from the ground side of the antenna to the, to the uh, ground network. Uh, I've got a, a little pouch here. This has got various connectors in it, like um, B and C connectors. Um, barrel connectors, things like that. Just real, uh, kind of really handy to have, you know, if you need to extend a piece of coax or if you need to adapt something, you know, since th this, these, those 316 pieces have B and C's on them. So, you know, I've got adapters in this little kit. Uh, another jumper, uh, this is for the bandpass filter, roll of electrical tape. Uh, we're almost getting to the bottom here. I've got several of these rubber uh, bongo ties. I've used these to, um, uh, to tie down things to, uh, you know, uh, coax if it's running down, a, down like a mast or something like that. They're, you know, they're just a super handy thing to have. Uh, what I got here is a uh, two um, sets of ground radials. These are the conventional ground radials. So there's eight wires on here, 16 feet long. Um, if I'm not going to use the Faraday cloth, I can use this more conventional uh, radial set. And then finally, one last antenna. Uh, we reviewed this one last year. This is the Gable uh, GRC7510, 75, I think so. 70. Um, it's their vertical antenna, and I've got it 
in the base. Uh, again, another thing I've been carrying for uh, QRP operation. I'm kind of mixed on the, uh, the effectiveness of this antenna, but I've been carrying it with me and trying to use it to, to get a better feeling on, on its operations. So we've got, got it at the, in the bottom of the kit as a spare vertical antenna or as a super lightweight uh, QRP antenna. So, so that is in essence my uh, antenna kit. You now I got a separate bag where I keep the transceivers in um, or the radio, you know, my two transceivers, the FT891, of course, and the uh, T817ND. Um, and that stays usually in the back seat of the car and this stuff rides in the, in the trunk. And the reason being is that it just um, does, I don't worry about it bouncing around so much if it's in the, in the back seat. But that's my portable antenna kit. That's the current one I'm using right now. Um, if you watch some of my older videos, you can kind of see how things have kind of transitioned over the years. Try to keep it uh, sort of a lightweight and um, uh, as modular as possible. And um, had a pretty, I think I got a pretty good, pretty good thing going on here, but I'm sure there's always going to be changes and additions in the future as, you know, the antennas I'm working on, you know, kind of shift and change uh, throughout the course of my uh, portable operation experience. So uh, anything that you saw in there that you found useful for your portable antenna kit, let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more of these types of videos, like and subscribe as always. And um, yeah, let me know if you got any questions or comments. I'd love to hear them. But uh, thanks for watching. I'm Michael from KB9VBR. You have a great day in 7.3.